Hello, I'm the Wild Vortex. My actual name is Chris, but you probably already know that if you've been watching me for a while. Um, and today, or tonight rather, because it is 3 45 in the morning, I'm going to talk about. Um, the prospect, and only the prospect, because we must hope that it is only a prospect of war between North Korea and America because we've got to face this as the world now that Trump is talking a lot and kind of upping his ante, or well, both sides are really so he's a, a Kim, Kim Dong Sun they're both heating up the um, discussion around conflict the language the uh, the language they're using so I think we as on the left have to come up with a comprehensive response I suppose um, a way to avoid the worst from happening I suppose is what I'm saying essentially so what can this involve? Obviously it's an international project this. Um, I think if there is any prospect of war then uh, left and the right really, the moderate right, have to bunch together and say no. Because if we, if there is a conflict between North Korea and Tr uh, America well, it's Trump really, it's just Trump's usual uh, virtual shit posting I guess that's going to stir up the trouble um, if China get involved in that conflict big, big group of truth two, you know, the two world's greatest world's greatest, world's biggest militaries facing up, you know, that's not great, the military's not great so I don't mean great, I just mean it's late <laughs> I don't mean late, great, it's late if those two powers, because obviously everyone's talking about how we're based in a new Cold War situation, which I think from because I went to the CND um, talk today in Manchester at the People's Assembly, and um, yeah, we need to as an international movement stop the worst from happening because if the worst happens then it literally means the end of the world and I don't know about you but I'm not really ready for the apocalypse and I don't really want the apocalypse because if that happens then none of us are waking up tomorrow none of us are going to be here and we need to be here so that we can make the world better bit by bit and that's going to take time we need peace. This is it. Peace. What's the alternative? The alternative is a lot of young men and women dying, children even. Everybody. I mean, really consider that for a second and you'll find uh, in yourself that it's just it's absolute madness, literally mutually assured destruction is madness the entire project of you know, the, as well with the we always get this propaganda that we need to protect ourselves against against what? against things that we created in the Middle East by going in there and messing about trying to play God in the Middle East I mean the Iraq Afghanistan conflict was we're trying to import democracy by bombing people, which I know these are all kind of obvious points, but why, why, why did Blair do that? Why did Bush do that? I'm not saying going back into an older conflict now, but we don't want to repeat the those mistakes of the past, and I certainly don't want us to go there again. I mean, my. Um, brother actually was in that conflict on a level 
Is it camp bastion for a while? And I'm sure he has no desire for anything to stir up again. You know, I've never been in a war and I've, I'd never want to be in one. Anybody who wants to be in a war is insane. It's, we have to, as a human race, we have to get beyond this tribal chest thumping business. To do that, we have to unilateral disarmament of instant nuclear weapons. Obviously, there's an argument that nuclear weapons prevent smaller scale conflict in areas, but I don't really agree with this view. I think if we can disarm unilaterally across the world, which does require international effort, then we have a possibility of moving forward as a human species. If not, where are we headed? Oblivion. Quite literally this time, if events proceed and Trump just carries on trumpeting his language of aggression towards North Korea. So, yeah. This is probably going to become a funny philosophy now, but actually it's not even funny. There's nothing, there's no fun, funny, I can't make any funny points about this at all. This is a really gravely serious thing. So, this is very unfunny philosophy. Um, but then, what philosophy, serious philosophy is funny really. Serious philosophy gets real into the real depth of what it is to be human. What it is to be human is to be compassionate and kind. Not filled with hate filled with aggression against others so yeah I'll probably leave this I've asked, I've asked a lot of questions and then I've made a lot of statements but I stand by all of them I feel because and um, actually I can probably go into the language that Trump uses obviously Trump talks a lot about Mexicans, He's, his whole shtick is to alienate, make the other alien I suppose. And now, let me confess, I have probably on some level been guilty of this, on a very minor level, but in terms of LGBT politics, I have occasionally othered Apparently, of of other trans people, I think. But if I ever did that, I apologise for it, and I didn't never meant to do that consciously. So if I've ever done that, I apologise. Um, I mean, Slavoj Žižek talks a lot about this. I think he has been in a similar situation where he's been accused of othering um, the LGBT community, which, and for me, that would be insane, since. Uh, I consider myself, uh, I wouldn't say I'm bisexual, but I'm, I've got a healthy curiosity around my sexuality, I suppose. I mean, I'm pretty much, I'm straight white male and all the rest of it, um, more or less, but I don't know. I think, so that's kind of, I'm there, I'm just covering the... Um, more than kind of left issues on um, safe spacing and such, which is often can be a very fraught issue, I suppose, because I think probably we can't, as human species, especially as with the rise of neo fascism, as Cornell West describes it, and which I am. Having watched his lecture a few times, he delivered on Trump and the neo-fascist movement. I have, I agree with him. We actually have to call Trump what he is. He is a developing a neo-fascist language and ideology. And none of us are probably free from ideology. I've been influenced by Marx. I've been influenced by Gramsci. I've been influenced by Rosa Luxemburg. I've been influenced by 
You and Emma Goldman, Hannah Old Anarchist thinkers, and yes, I am a figure of the left, for sure. I am. I'm, I guess, if I was to define myself politically in any way, it would be uh, classically liberal, um, democratic socialist. Um, but I'm also informed deeply by the anarchist left as well. Or the idea of sometimes you just have to band together and do for DIY, do things yourself, I suppose. Um, and I'm not talking in terms of uh, a Soviet style revolution, I'm just speaking in terms of libertarian socialism, really. Libertarian socialism being uh, people and communities taking control of their own environment and uh, communities, basically. I mean, uh, even Trotskyism, and to a degree, is, I've gone through some of that, I guess. I've read some Trotsky not a long time ago now, but a very long time ago when I was a student, in fact. When I should have been studying coding, <laughs> and they'll, uh, I just go into computer labs and yeah, that's what I just did. When I was at college, I used to just go into computer labs and read up on Trotsky and such, and all sorts of figures and you know, Marxist.org and stuff. I'm going into this is probably getting a bit boring now. I'm kind of going off the point, but. Um, else to say. Obviously this is quite a long video but all of them are 20 minutes long. <laughs> uh, this is unfunny philosophy obviously, obviously but <laughs> I'm kind of veering into life stories and such. But yeah I think I mean, Gramsci had this idea about how he hegemony which is an idea around cultures culture perpetuates culture of culture and I kind of think in some respects Terence McKenna's idea that culture is not your friend is also very relevant to this, this, this what I'm actually talking about now which is the, the idea that culture is a virtual simulated experience uh, that is what it is which I guess also relates to Gramsci too in the sense that Culture just exists for the benefit of intellectuals. I think as Gramsci defines it in his prison notebooks, uh, which he wrote in while he was um, under Mussolini's iron fist of shit. But yeah, anyway. Neo fascism. So Cornell West talked somewhat about the emergence of the. Well, it's not somewhat, he's been talking about it loads and Charlottesville has changed the thing, it's turned people who might have been on the moderate right, hopefully in America against Trump I hope so, because they need to get Trump out in America he's a menace the sooner he's out the better to be honest he's just a bully and he's a very, well I mean grab the pussy comment was ridiculous it's just that. It's just, and obviously, he's, I mean, basically, um, yeah, it's just terrible, man. This to the world, and this is probably a bit boring now because I'm kind of jumping around a bit, but. Forgive me my liberal transgressions, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, in terms of liberalism, if you look at that's, this ne the idea of neoliberalism was the idea of the educated middle classes, then just, I guess it kind of, it's kind of like the idea of technocrats, I suppose, in a sense. You get people, the middle classes get control of the means of governance or production, if you like. And then uh, they use that apparatus, state apparatus, to just keep the status quo in check in 
in the st being the status quo. Also a terrible band. Sorry, not my cup of tea. Um, and yeah, I'm more of a Hawkwind kind of guy. There's one joke and they're released. Um, I'm going to go to this. Where is it? We're 50 minutes in. So, I think in a sense, in terms of um, obviously we've got green energy has to be a thing that the human race has to develop. We've been badgering on about this now for uh, t 8 years, 10 years probably now. And obviously people are getting involved. I'm not involved enough actually. I mean, I've signed up to CND today which is good. I feel good about that. And I feel that Hopefully, I can make a contribution that's positive to CND because nuclear power is is not the way forward for the world energy and for our energy in the UK. Even though the Tories are, I think they've already commissioned a bunch of nuclear power stations, but we need to not do that. That's another reason why a Labour government is very important in the in uh, the UK because for the next general election in 2022 because. Green energy creates jobs, it's safer, it's more efficient. I read just recently actually that um, I think it's a, a Finnish student, possibly, I can't remember, a Euro European student anyway, had uh, developed a um, uh, something to do with, uh, well, it's green tech anyway, and green tech is really going to be our future of for um, energy needs so we don't have to rely on nuclear power which obviously comes with, with nuclear power which look at Chernobyl and people say oh it was a long time ago yada, yada, yada. but that could happen quite easily I mean it's nuclear fusion I suppose which people say is safer but then I, I just feel we have to think outside the box and we have to develop something that's actually safer, cleaner, etc. Anyway, um, I was talking about nuclear weapons. <sighs> we have to just never ever use them as a human race, human species, because if we do that, then we're fucked. That's it. Game over game over man as it were um, obviously that's stating the obvious but I've got to make these things 20 minutes it's the kind of conditions I've set myself I've been challenging myself all the time a kind of Socratic method if you will which is good more people should do that more people have to question themselves you have to question yourself at the deepest level and if you're not doing that you have to even question yourself to why are you not doing that you have to constantly reassess and question yourself. Every principle you hold dear, everything. So, anyway, it's been 18 minutes now. I'll uh, end this f unfunny philosophy now. <laughs> and thank you for watching if you have been. If you have any thoughts, leave them below whether they be critical or not, whether they be um, whether you're a moderate right winger, whether you're conservative, whether you're a Labour whether you're an anarchist, whether you're on the hard left whether you are somewhere on the alt right who wants to look into alternatives engage a bit on here as long as you, you know, don't re resort to Jew hating stuff which is perennial, you know, very annoying, basically. So just don't do it. Okay, I've been Chris, and that was my twenty-minute talk on CND and nuclear disarmament and why nuclear weapons. We just have to say no to them, obviously, and why we should say no to any potential conflict in um, the 
between China and the US. So we don't, we're dead.